this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping back. I am going to show you tonight how I transferred the uh, painting that I did last night on the block cardstock. That design, I then put it onto a 20 ounce white wine glass and just giving you a view of the one that I've already painted. Now the one that I will be painting for you will be similar as I keep telling you in every video but not identical. And I'm hoping that you like my videos. If you like my glass painting videos please make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Give me a big thumbs up and if you like the video make sure that you're sharing it also I would appreciate that. Let's get started. Now I, I don't know why I picked that up. I am going to be using brush wise. Tonight I'm going to be using the 16. This is the round brush. Turn the screen a little bit, sorry. Round brush, which is by Princeton, the Heritage series. I'm also going to be using the number four in the same series, round brush, number 10 flat brush, good old folk art, or I should say one stroke brushes, and then a couple of my scruffy brushes. This one that's already flared out, I'm going to be using on the bigger flower, and then I'm going to use this one that's not as flared out on the smaller flowers. These again are all one stroke brushes. I believe it's a one quarter brush on the scruffy, but I really can't read it. Then I base coated the glass in licorice black. And I went ahead and did that just to save time, so I'm just going to go ahead and paint the design on the glass itself. I used my favorite brushes for doing one color painting, you know, just to get a good coverage. They're, they're just excellent brushes. I can't really say enough about them. The, this is a 3 8 brush. It's Glass Art by Dynasty, number 71. And then as far as paints go, they'll be the same as what I did in the, the painting on the black cardstock. I have Yellow Citron, uh, the Yellow Light, Cinnamon, Burnt Umber, Thicket, and then again the Licorice, which is the base coat. The Burnt Umber and the Cinnamon are actually the multi-surface paints. The other ones are the gloss paints. All of these are folk art products made by Plaid. Okay, now, sorry about that, back to starting this with the bigger flower. Um, also, before I do that, I just want to state on here, I did a, just a kind of a funky ridge around the top. You don't have to do it like this, obviously. I just wanted to do something different, so that's why it's like that. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with the bigger flower. I am just using the Wicker White, which I forgot to include in my opening. Um, that is the Wicker White I am using for the flowers. Just like I did on the painting I did on the black cardstock, I'm going to get started here with the, the bigger flower first. And I'm basically just kind of doing two strokes side by side, kind of connected as a petal. Not necessarily, I mean they don't have to be, but anyways. I am going to continue around, turning the glass as I do it. Just keep turning it. I just thought, you know, putting the two by beside each other kind of gave it a neat look. If you want to do it as just a single stroke, you can. If you want to spread them out more, you can do that as well. And as I mentioned, you know, no two of my hand-painted glasses are going to be identical. Even though I would be selling these as a set, I will make sure that the people realize that it is not going to be identical. It will be a similar pattern. Now, if you're someone who you're painting a lot of the same pattern, 
day in and day out, it's very possible that your pattern will become very uh, similar to each one that you're painting. I mean, I have done a lot of certain patterns on glasses where I'm doing you know, several hundred or thousands and it does come out looking very similar. So I can on those, you know, I still, still do have a, have something on there that indicates that it isn't going to be identical. I just don't want people to be upset thinking that in our mass produced mindset that we have, you know, factory produced, mass produced, that everything is the same. Wow. When you're doing hand painting, hand work, I don't know what happened there. Um, it's not all going to be the same. So I want people to realize that just like they think a lot of times customers would get upset when something doesn't ship out right away. Well, you know, unfortunately, with doing um, custom work or hand painting or whatever it is you're doing, you can't always do it immediately. Now you have other people that have placed orders and you kind of have to fill those in. Now, I don't know if you noticed what I was doing. I'd gone through and painted a lot of the strokes, you know, side by side. And then on some of the openings, I went ahead and did like a single stroke. I'm not sure what the deal is with this part of the flower over here. What's going on? But it seems like it keeps running. All right. So there you have it. I could go in and add another little stroke here just to make it a fuller flower. And then I'm going to switch over to my number four and then start doing the smaller. So I tend to get really big once I start doing the, the next ones. I'm not sure why that is. All right, so let's continue on. I just did no certain spacing, but I just did similar kind of uh, flower, just a smaller version out to the side. I don't know why I have a tendency to go the same direction each one I paint. I always go to the left, but I'm left-handed, so maybe that's why. And this is going to be a full, a full little flower. It's going to be similar to the big one, but not identical. I'm sorry if you get tired of me saying that. I just know that from years of experience with painting and selling things that some people can be very picky about, well, that doesn't look like what was in the picture. Well, if you're selling and you're actually making, uh, making more than one, like this, right now I'm kind of doing like one ofs sets. Um, and that's not a big deal, but if you're making several and you just have a, a paint, plain picture of it to show people, they're going to expect it to look like that. Or it's possible they're going to expect it to look like that. So that's why I kind of push that issue a lot and, and kind of try to get it embedded in your head because I don't want you to get, get any you know, problems if you have it noted and they complain about it, I just have to refer them to my, my notes. You know, sometimes people read them and sometimes people don't. And that could be frustrating as well. All right, so on this one, you notice like I'm not necessarily, I think on the big one I did, did this more where they were side by side. I am leaving some spacing just to give it a little bit different look. You know, I think this, white that I'm using for some reason is a little bit runnier. So I just added some new. I think it's a little bit runnier for some reason. Not certain why. Okay, so let's come over here and I'm going to do another one of these partials. If you have any questions, please make sure that you feel free to ask me. 
I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what your next painting project is. I'd love to hear what you're working on. If you have a channel, I'd love to see it. Feel free to share. I'm definitely someone that is interested in seeing others work. Just want to see how you're getting along. If you decide to give my painting a try, please feel free to share that with me. I'd love to see pictures. See how you're doing. This is just so much fun. I think painting on glass, because it moves so easily, for me at least, makes it fun. Um, if you have an experience in other, other types of mediums, different items that you paint on, you know, maybe share those with me as well. Right now I'm just double loading the open scrunchy one that I have and I'm going to tap in the center of my big flower. A big white flower. And I think it just you know, just imagine sitting around drinking out of your your hand painted glass. Not only is it kind of neat to share with friends, but they also make great gifts for any occasion. You know, somebody getting married, um, somebody having a special birthday. And I like to tap in, add some white to it. Again, kind of just giving it some some interest. And then, you know, just keep working it until you get it the way you, you think it looks good. Alright, so I got that one in. I'm going to switch, like I said before, to the more closed scrunchie. It just fits the center of the flowers better. And I'm going to go ahead, let's see which direction I put that. Like I said, it's, it's fun. I really never got a whole lot of complaints with the glass painting. The biggest problem with if you're selling it is to get it there in one piece. That can be an issue. Uh, no matter how hard you try to pack it. You know, I'm sorry, but the post office or whomever you're using as as your shipping company they're not they're not nice <laughs> I mean they're you know to your packages they're rough that's just the nature of the beast all right so on this one I'm dotting it into the top and I don't know if you consider these ones where they're just starting to open or that they've already had their life and they're in the process of losing leaves depending on however you want to look at it could be either way all right like I said these are just simple patterns as I mentioned in my when I do the black cardstock paintings I like to try to mention that, you know, I do the, the easy types of painting so that anybody can do it, or just about anybody, unless you truly can't paint. They're not meant to be hard. They're actually meant to be easy just for that purpose. I'm not sure why I can't get that little piece right there nice and neat. And bugs me. And I'm on this one too, going to. Oh, my camera moved. I'm sorry. I just noticed that. So busy yakking that I didn't notice. Sorry about that. Not sure why. I know last night it was moving. I don't know what's causing that, but a little scary. So I'm not sure if we have ghosts. All right, and then I'm going to swing around here 
I'm going to do this one. And again, it's an open, open flower, full flower. I wanted to try to get a couple of videos posted this week with the holidays and all. I kind of slacked a little. I didn't do a lot. I mean, I did a lot, but I didn't do a whole lot of work, I should say. Probably should have, but... Alright, so there we got that. Hope you got all that. I'm sorry that the screen kind of flipped on me. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is take my little stylus that I have. And again, this is from a, from a fingernail painting set. Not that I do any kind of fancy fingernail painting, but they're fun to use on uh, as a dotting tool for your regular paintings. I'm just going to go ahead and, and dot in some little, little brown dots. You can use more than one color. Right here, I'm just going to use uh, the brown. This is the burnt umber. And just kind of randomly place the dotting. Try not to line them up too much. Sometimes I feel like they are lined up a little bit too much, but all right. They come out there a little bit. Do the same on all of them. All of these will have a few dots here and there. I think the dots just kind of give it just a tad bit more interest than just leaving it plain. If you don't like the dots though, not everybody's into dots, feel free to leave them out. It's your painting. So do with it as you please. I like folk art enamels for glass painting. If you're using something else, if you would put that in the comment below, I'd love to hear what your favorite paint is. Let me know if you've ever tried the folk art enamels, if you actually are using something different, and why you prefer what you're using as opposed to the folk art enamels. I've tried a lot of different paints, and I'll be honest, this is my favorite. But, you know, I haven't really tried anything new lately, so there could be other things out there that, I've, that I'm missing. Alright, so the next part is to start adding in, like, your stems and your flowers, or your flowers, I'm sorry, your, your, I want to say, your leaves. Start adding in the leaves. The first thing I'm going to do is just start adding in. I'm just going to kind of pick a spot where I think like a stem would kind of come. And I'm just going to randomly pull it down into the stem of the glass. What I'll do next is this little fellow I will include as part of this stem. And I'm trying to keep them very similar. Let's see what we did with that one. I'm going to pull this one over, over with these two. In the end, it really doesn't matter too much, but because you're not really going to tell with all the leaves that I paint on here. But I'm going to put this one just kind of randomly down into the stem again. And then I think I might just pull this one over into it as well. Alright, I'm just using the flat brush to do that, using the flat brush to do the petals. I am going to, like I said, I keep looking at my other glasses, making sure that I'm doing stuff that's similar. Because I really don't want to, I, I want them to be similar as, as much as possible. Alright, and again, with these, I'm just kind of using a, a wavy kind of leaf. You can, 
you know, actually make it to where, you know, it's bumpier than what I'm doing or it's more kind of slanted or a little curve to it. You can kind of vary it, like where I just kind of started and then went back down. On this one, keeping the green in the middle. If you are somebody who likes to go ahead and put the veining in, you can do that. I'm choosing not to do that on these. That's up to you, though. I'm going to be using basically two different kinds of, of leaves on this. So I'm pulling it up and then maybe pulling it down a little bit. You can even leave it like that if you just wanted it to look like that. I think that's kind of a pretty leaf. Just doing part of it. Alright. I'm just trying to now I'll go come back this way, pull it in like that. Just kind of gives it a neat look. You know, even though it's basically the same leaf, it's getting a different look depending on how I turn it or how I bring the brush back. If I bring it back like that, keeping the green on the outside, kind of curving it a little bit like that. I love leaves, so. If you haven't noticed, I'm a big leaf person. Okay, and then we'll keep turning it. Now, I'm sorry if I'm not getting all this on the video. I'm trying to. But as you noticed, I didn't realize my camera had swung around, so sorry for that. And it's okay to kind of go back and forth, go over the other, the other stem, you know, it's fine. It's more of a natural look if you do it that way anyways. And the reason for that is, you know, when you think about it, if you do a, see a bouquet of flowers or a live bouquet, I mean, you know, the flowers, the leaves, all that are all over the place. They're not going in certain directions. They're going all over. So, why wouldn't you? Alright, so I'm going to do another one up here. And again, like I said, I happened to make this crazy flower a lot bigger than the original one. I don't know why I do that. I mean, they're both pretty good size, but I really have a tendency to, to do that for some reason. It's not that I wanted it to be huge. But I guess it kind of is. Like, alrighty. I'm just going to pull this one back. Like that. So you go up. I'm going to go over it again. You go up. I just kind of wiggled it down and then just pulled it back. You can just pull it back straight. Or you can wiggle it too, however you want to do it. Now I kind of feel funny when I have just one sticking there like that, but the space is kind of limited, so I'm going to use some of the, just the one stroke basic touch and pull leaves. As fillers. That. I love this this uh, yellow citron. I think it just it's like it's illuminated. And once you paint your glasses, if you you want to just stand back and see where maybe you need to add maybe more leaves or whatnot, you know that's perfect. I'm going to put it down here. I think these are these are turning out beautiful. Very unique, and that's what I I really strive to do is something different. You know, I see a lot of glass work and a lot of you know people adding 
you know, beads and all that kind of goodness. The only problem I have with that is anything extra that you add to a glass, that's just more that can actually come off the glass and cause an issue for someone. And maybe they, maybe it's not that um, easy to have it come off. I don't know. But I see a lot of beading. And I know some of it's paint, but I haven't really figured out. If anybody knows what, what kind of paint that is, I'd love to know. And if it actually stays on. I'm just going to go ahead and add just a few of these down in this area. Because I think I had them over my other glass. And then just kind of pull it from the van like it's just part of it. I crossed over. I mean, there's more you can add if you wish. I'm going to maybe add a couple down here. Because I don't know if you noticed on my stem, what I did is I did paint the stem black. But then I also uh, went down it with the green and left a little bit of black in between just to give the stem some fun kind of a fun look. Alright, so I'm going to start that, I do believe. And hopefully that ties in all the all of the little stems that I had coming down in here. Like I said, it just kind of finishes, gives it a finished look. It's easy. Just really random. I'm just giving some space here to the, the black so you see that. And I just keep turning it and applying the paint. So I'm trying to get four rows in here. Get it in. Like I said, these are not to be particular about the spacing. And as I've mentioned before, the one thing nice about doing a base coat on your glass before you paint a design on it is that will add to the durability because it's a thicker, a thicker painting. And then just around the bottom of it, I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, you know what? I think I did these off. I did opposite direction. Oh, well. That's one thing you need to pay attention to when you start striping, which, which stripe did you place where. But you know what? It's be one way for somebody to tell the difference in their gloss. They won't need a, a gloss charm. That's one thing, too, and you have to think about when you have painted glass. You have no need, really, if they're different, you know, similar but different. You don't have a need for that. All right, one last thing that I did, I'm going to do, if I can find it, is take my stylus and around this top edge, I just did some dotting. You can leave this out if you don't like it. I don't want to take the time to do it. Again, it just gives it, ties the green, well, I guess you got plenty of green. But ties the green in. You could use a different color if you wanted to. You could even make it white. And you know, if you wanted to add another, or I guess more of the, the white to it. Not another color, but you could add another color, I guess there was a contrasting color that you thought would work with your design, why not? I could think of gold, silver. But anyhow, as you're looking at this, I hope you like the design. Again, as I mentioned, if you try it, I'd love to see pictures. I love when people share. If you like my videos make sure that you subscribe I am working on trying to get my channel built up and I would appreciate any sharing that you can do if you like my pro my work 
again, I continue to strive to get better at this. Kind of a newbie. Definitely not a millennial welder trying to compete. So that can make it a little bit more difficult, but I do have a lot of painting experience, so hopefully that helps. And I'm actually trying to learn more because I feel like you never can learn too much. And you shouldn't stop learning as you get older either. Alright, so there we have it. Have a pretty big white flower with some little flowers and leaves and vines. Funky stem. And I think it's beautiful. Love it. Love how it turned out. Appreciate you taking the time to view my video. If you have any questions, again, please let me know down in the comments. Um, make sure you do give me a big thumbs up. Show them here. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good week.